What is going to write today? We're back with a 2 and 1 WWE Elite 112 review with WWE Elite Series 112 Seth Rollins and Channing Stacks Lorenzo. Now, Seth Rollins is obviously no stranger to the Elite line. I feel like we get him pretty, pretty regularly, right? And I, I love Seth Rollins. I'm glad to have him here. And he comes with a championship that does not feature Seth Rollins' side plates, which is going to be very nice for everybody's collections. I know everybody's going to probably want this one over the Elite 109, which is going to be a big selling point for the figure. And then we have Channing's Lorenzo over here, which is pretty cool. I did not expect to get him this fast, and I know it hasn't been, you know, like, just lightning fast, but at the same time, I don't know. It, when when he was revealed for Elite 112, kind of took me by surprise, but Mattel has been getting really good at including new talent, including NXT talent, including talent that maybe isn't always showcased on the main roster, or, you know, that everybody on the planet knows. So that's pretty cool, man. But front viewing window here, Seth Rollins, another black and gold gear. Say what you will there. I, I don't know what's going on there, man. But hopefully the gear will look good when we get it out of the packaging. But, you know, you have Seth Rollins on the side. You get a shot of Seth Rollins on the back. Got the little bio read there. Payback 2023, apparently. And then you do have the Seth freaking Rollins on the side. And then we do have Channing Lorenzo, or Stax, if you will, with his white shirt. Looks pretty good here. It looks like he doesn't lack accessories like some other figures would we've seen so far in this wave, but there's stacks there, there's stacks there, lots of stacks, so he can't even come with sunglasses, man, you couldn't come, you can't give this man sunglasses, couldn't give the man sunglasses, how bummerific, nonetheless, man, if you want to grab these figures, you already like what you see, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but we're going to crack these two out of the packaging, find out what Elite 112 Rollins and Lorenzo are all about, and we're going to shut the hell up and do so, man, so with that being said, let's dive into it, get started, put these guys on a rotating base, and see if Seth Rollins and Channing stacks are worth a stack of shish. So here's Elite 112 Seth Rollins and Channing Stacks Lorenzo out of the packaging. Kind of looking like a damn tag team if you look at it. I mean, they got the black and gold going. They look pretty good here. There are some things I don't like about both figures, which we're going to dive into. We'll, of course, touch on as we go throughout the review. But what we're going to do first is look at Channing's accessories first, and then the Channing Stacks figure, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Seth freaking Rollins' accessories and Seth freaking Rollins. So getting into Stacks' accessories, man, you do get a decent amount. Much better than, I guess, we've seen in the last few figures we reviewed. Finally get some cloth goods in this bish. And on this jacket, I really like it. It's similar to the Shinsuke Nakamura Elite 96 jacket. I don't know why the damn exposure is so terrible on this camera. What, like, what, are the, what are the hell are we doing over here, man? I'm trying to run some sort of video quality here, and it looks like dog shish. You do have a nice jacket going here, though. You have the Velcro on the front. I like the collar flips right there on the belt and the neck. That looks pretty quality. It is Velcro, so you can do that. And it's probably going to fit a lot of characters. You have the nice eagle on the back with the two flags, which I think looks pretty good as well and easily removable. You could actually acetone this design off and have it plain white and put it on any character you wanted if you wanted to do so. But it looks pretty good. It's a quality jacket. I like this jacket. So he's got a good jacket. Outside of that, he does come with the black hand tape, mic holding hands or weapon wielding hands, and they have black pegs, which is always great. He comes with the new version of the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard handshaking Johnny Gargano entrance style hands, which are good. You can put the hands out. You can handshake. You can bitch slap people. It's all good stuff here. And last but not least, he does come with fisted hands with the black pegs and black hands tape to, of course, beat the hell out of people. So getting into the Channing figure itself, starting off a head sculpt, a bit Dolph Ziggler-y, really. I mean, look at him. Look at his face. He looks a bit like Dolph Ziggler. This reminds me a lot of like an old school Ziggler head sculpt or something. And at the same time, if you put, I feel like if you put some sunglasses on it, it would look like Patrick Mahomes. You getting Patrick Mahomes vibes? I'm getting Patrick Mahomes and Dolph Ziggler is what I'm getting there. But I really like this hair sculpt. I think they did a good job. Really wish they could have gave him a man a fade. I don't know what it is. They don't care about haircuts, Brad. They do not give a damn about your fade, all right? They don't care. They're they're leaving that out, but uh, it would have been cool to see there. He does have a fade on the back of the packaging, which would have been nice. I've seen him do it before, but nonetheless, you know, a uh, handsome man looking good here. You know, he's looking pretty fire. Uh, I'm going to put some sunglasses on here just to see what he looks like. You guys want to put some sunglasses? I don't know what sunglasses these are, so don't even don't even look at me, Brad. I don't know whose sunglasses these are, but uh, they're just some of the black ones here, and I'm trying to just get them on the face so you can kind of see what that looks like. That looks pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, that looks damn good. Wow. Got a little something special going on there. So the Channing figure does look good there. You got the sunglasses and everything. Then going down to the torso, this is the Ricochet torso, which is a very unique thing. Didn't expect this. We do have the Ricochet torso. He's shredded up. He's looking good and everything. Never seen this torso used on anybody else, I don't think. I think this is the only character. Ricochet and Stax is the only people. I think they could use this for Finn Balor, but I low-key... 
I don't know. I could see them using it for Finn Balor. It would just depend on the rest of the formula. But he's got the standard arms in there, black wrist tape. He does have the T-bar crotch, which is a very unique choice. I would not have selected the T-bar crotch. I think this is also the Sami Zayn crotch, which I don't like. It's a bit wide looking, which creates these wide looking hips. And this leg mold is actually new. These are new legs we're getting here. And I like the wrinkles and sculpt, but again, they look very thick. They look like very, very thick legs. I don't think his pants are supposed to be this thick. And you may be able to use this as a Sami Zayn base if you wanted to. I know a lot of people don't like how baggy his pants are. And it would actually lead to you being able to use the correct boot height. So maybe this could be a Sami Zayn solve for you. But then going down to the lower legs and the boots, he does have the standard gold boots, which we've seen, which this mold will be retired soon. I never hated this mold, but I am excited for the new mold to see how everything shakes out. But then as far as articulation, he has a pretty good ab crunch that is very tight. You can even and hear it right there, which is crazy. Tight waist. He's got all the, you know, the double jointed stuff that we've come to know from Mattel. His hands are a bit loose. I know a lot of people complain about that, how the, the hands, you interchange them once and they get loose. I really haven't figured out a great solve for that just yet, but he can split really good, and his kick forward's immaculate. Look at that kick forward right there. So he has a really good kick forward, and his thigh rotation is good. His double jointed knee, while pinless, is not as tight as other figures, so that is nice to see. Still a little tight, but still pretty buttery smooth when in comparison to other non-pinned figures or, you know, pinless figures we've seen. Boots swivel. He has a not a really good ankle rocker, which should be fixed soon, and then the boots go down and up there. So I think you're going to be pretty impressed with the articulation. I just don't like how thick the legs look. The legs look pretty thickness there, but I don't know. They're, they're not bad. I think they do get the job done for the most part. But in terms of comparison, we do have Tony D here from Elite 111. So we are getting both of these guys, which is pretty cool. You know, apparently childhood best friends, Don and everything. We got we got a pretty cool look here to compare these two. They look pretty good up next to each other as well. I don't think that the heights are bad or anything. Channing is a little taller, so that makes sense there. I just hate this John Cena shoe mold. So that's really the only thing holding these two guys back. But nonetheless, man, that does it for your Channing Stacks Lorenzo figure comparison. And then we have Seth Rick and Rollins, etc. And for his accessories, man, why can we not get a jacket of some kind, man? I know we have the Ultimate coming, and we have the other Ultimate that had fantastic cloth goods, but this man has worn so many cool things to the ring, and we don't really have any of them in, in figure form from Mattel, which is kind of bummy, but we do get the World Heavyweight title here, and this is pretty quality. You're going to see no Seth Rollins side plates, which is a major complaint from a lot of people. A lot of people bummed out that it didn't include the, you know, the blank side plates. Now, you can actually put this on any character you want. You can put this on Roman. Roman Reigns, you can put this on CM Punk, you can put this on Gunther, you can put this on anybody, now that the Seth Rollins side plates are not on there, and was it the biggest deal that we didn't have, you know, the regular side plates on the figure? Not the biggest deal of all time, but it's certainly something that people definitely cared about, so it's nice that they listened and changed the side plates, but the shape is good, the, everything's good here, it's quality, it looks like the title, can't really fight them on it. And then we also have mic holding hands, which are always great, they can hold the mic, they can hold the weapons, they can, you know, grab things. Some of my favorite interchangeable hands are the Randy Orton intro hands that they started with him and now they have made their way into Seth Rollins you know doing his entrance and everything coming out singing along with the crowd and I think this is beautiful as well just great hands I love these and I think this is the first time in the Mattel history that Seth Rollins has not come with any fists this time he comes with pointer fingers so he can point at you and tell you to shut the hell up instead of fist to beat the hell out of you. So there's there's a difference there. But this is the first time since Mattel has made the interchangeable hands and made a Seth Rollins where they did not include interchangeable hands that came with fists. So that's kind of crazy. But he comes with the pointer finger hands. And then getting into Seth Rollins, man, starting off the head sculpt, this is the Ultimate Edition that we've seen before. It does have the blonde in there, of course, with the ombre going throughout, which is nice. It's just a head sculpt we've seen before. Not that it's a bad head sculpt. It's just one that has been previously used. So, you know, there is that. But going down to the torso... All the same goods for Seth Rollins, chest hair, stomach hair. You have the back tattoo coming down, which is nice. I feel like back in the day, man, they would have just skipped over that, or at least maybe not Mattel. I'm just saying action figure guys, like people, the toy makers would have skipped over them, and they they don't give a damn. You know what I mean? So there's that. You have the standard arms in there, black wrist tape. And then here's the big difference between Elite 109. It's going to be a changing gear, which is very similar. And somebody told me this is supposed to be Bray Wyatt inspired, and I don't know how I feel about that, or I don't know the exact, you know, I don't know if that's accurate or not. It, I mean, it has the black and gold in there. It has pretty cool patterns going on. I'm not entirely sure if it is supposed to be or not, but it looks high quality. I like that, you know, the lines and everything. Is that line supposed to be like that? 
that? I guess it is. I don't know entirely, but I like the like camouflage that's coming in through there and the pinstripes look clean. Not getting, you know, a, a ton of differi differentiation or a bunch of line mess ups. There are a few inconsistencies, but at the end of the day, looks pretty good for all these lines being on an action figure. He has the same knee pads as the Elite 109, but they are the open kind. So if you look at the Elite 109, it's the same pattern. It's just the change of style of knee pad. They're the open versus the closed. And then he does have the gold lower legs with the gold kick pads, which are the same as the Elite 109. But interesting enough, if you go to the Elite 109, the golds are significantly different. So on the left, you have the Elite 109. Look at the knee pads. And then, uh, you know, the black lines down across the top. And I'm sure he wore the exact same knee pads on the same night. And, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he did change them slightly, but you can see it's the same style kick pad. It's just the golds are significantly significantly different. This is more accurate. The Elite 112 is a lot more accurate in gold. This is a lot more lighter or yellowy gold, but this is a, a pretty cool figure indeed. It's just, you know, you don't have a ton of differences going on between this one and the Elite 109. As far as articulation is concerned on this Seth Rollins man, I mean, you're getting, I mean, it's Seth Rollins. We've seen this guy before, but I will say, I feel like his kick forward is better than it was on his Elite 109, but it could just be, you know, what figure you get. Like, this side's even better than that, so it may just depend on which figure you get specifically, but if we bring in an Elite 109 just for shishes and gigs right here. I remember, oh, well, this one's pretty good, but I have like a, I have a lot of this figure, so maybe it's just, I guess it just depends, but yeah, it's got all the standard articulation of a Seth Rollins. It's not, you know, it's not going to shatter the earth, but it's pretty articulated, you know? I don't, I don't hate posing Seth Rollins figures. He's got the new formula. He's got all the good stuff going on, but let's get into some Seth Rollins figure comparisons. So for Seth Rollins figure comparisons, here's the Elite 112 up next to a couple Elite 109s and a Cle and a couple Elite 99s, and these two have different kick pads. These two have different kick pads, so this Elite 109 fix up has the Elite 99 kick pads, and then this Elite 99 has the Elite 109 kick pads. So I just did some swappages right here, and again, you can kind of see, I mean, they're virtually all the same. It has the screaming head sculpt. This has a, a ultimate head sculpt on it, kind of fixed up. This has the man bun head. So it's just like a bunch of mixes and matches that you can see. And virtually, we've gotten a shish ton of black and gold attires. It's the third straight Elite Seth Rollins. And if you include the top talents, which is going to be the Dusty Rhodes polka dot gear inspired from Hell in a Cell, that one's also technically black and gold or black and yellow so i mean it's just a ton of black attires with gold or accented in gold and whatnot so i just think we should get some colorful gears i know we have that ultimate edition coming the fan takeover but even that one is just a really weird seth rollins attire not even really something that you equate with him i guess you could say so it's it's kind of all over the place man but i don't know i like this gear and if i had to rank these gears this might be my favorite but i really do like this even though it has that little pirate you know knee pad style deal i think i like this one the most out of all three gears just because i like pinstripes but i don't know it's hard to say man maybe it could be recency bias i don't i don't know maybe it's because it's fresh i don't know what's going on but i do like the you know the pinstripes going on and i just wish he came with some sort of cloth goods this is the only one that came with cloth goods but it had that really old head sculpt from elite 45 50 year 50 series old at the time and then this one I put the you know the Carmelo Hayes jacket on and I will put this on here just to kind of see what it looks like so you can see and I don't know it's just kind of annoying when you don't get the cloth goods but I mean I guess they give us enough accessories for you to make your own deal but it'd certainly be appreciated to see some things such as this you know what I mean but yeah I mean that's uh that's pretty much your Elite 112 Seth Rollins and then for a comparison here's the Elite 112 Becky and the Elite 112 Seth and they don't really accent each other that great I mean they're not bad but I don't know they're they're okay they they, they work together you know I mean they they go together, so it kind of makes sense, right? But I think that about wraps up our WWE Elite 112 2-in-1 Seth Freakin' Rollins and Channing Stacks Lorenzo figure review. At the end of the day, I think they're well-made figures. I don't hate anything about either figure. I do think there's some, like, little minor things about the figures I don't like. I don't like the Channing Stacks crotch piece choice. I think they could have went with a... I don't know. It's like the legs and crotch look really thick for him and his attire. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. You can let me know what you think. It just looks a bit thick, in my opinion. I really like the use of the Ricochet torso. You know, we've really never seen that re used in this way. I think they could use that on a guy like Finn Balor and such. And I really do wish he would have came with sunglasses though. I feel like that's an easy add in there. But at the end of the day, it's a really good execution of the character. I think that you could possibly fix some stuff up, change some things around if you didn't like it enough. I really like the cloth goods, obviously. Seth Rollins is really lacking in everything in terms of accessories. Only a championship, just like his Elite 109 figure, which is kind of bummy. I wish that he came with some sort of cloth goods. You know, he's usually rocking some sort of cloth goods or something to the ring, and not to include that, it's kind of, it's pretty bummy. I, you know, it's like, god dang, can we get something added in there, you know? And I feel like this whole line kind of is lacking in cer certain accessories, at least to this point. I do like Channing's jacket, though. His jacket is really nice. You could even acetone the logo on the back and give it to anybody really but I really like the figure I think that 
you know, at the end of the day, I don't think, you know, if you're a Channing fan, you know, you want a Stax figure, then absolutely easy pick, but not something that I guess you absolutely have to have in your collection at this moment. And then Seth Rollins, I don't know, if you like the gear, sure, if you don't, skip it. The championship doesn't have the Seth Rollins side plate, so that may be something you want to buy. But at the end of the day, it's just a repaint of the Elite 109 with the Ultimate Edition head sculpt. And we've seen so many Elites with this head sculpt now, and just figures in general. And I know he has the fade in there, and you have different things executed, but I don't know, it's not it's not moving the needle that much. I don't think if you get this figure, you're missing out on too much, or if you skip this figure, you're missing too much. But I will say, I think I do like this gear better than the Elite 109, maybe, but it's funny because it's the exact same kick pads and look look as the Elite 109, but the golds are drastically different there. So I don't know. I guess it looked a bit green last time, and now it's a bit more goldish. It looks a lot better gold. This this is actual gold compared to the last one. So I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what you think there, but the pinstripes and everything do look sweet. And I'm a Seth Rollins guy, so I do like the figure. It's just, I don't know. I don't think it's the most sought-after figure of all time, but that'll be up to you, obviously. And if you guys want to grab these, can do so. Over Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap up this 2-in-1 WWE Elite 112 review of Seth Rollins and Stax Lorenzo. But I appreciate you guys so very much for watching. Huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate you, fellas. Thank you guys so very much, as always, for all your continued support. But I think I'm getting the hell out, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at my damn toys. I appreciate the patrons as always, man. I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later.